And I imagine that they probably talked about more than the weather or her dress or the stock market or that great sports game yesterday. They held all things in common, the story of Jesus at work in their lives and their own stories in common together. I mean, can you imagine hosting about a hundred of us or so in your own living room? And even if you have hosted a hundred or so people at your home, you didn't get to invite everybody that came. Some of them you may have liked and known, and some of them you may not have liked and known. And yet Jesus told you to stick together, to worship together, to need each other. Even though the only thing you may have in common is the love of Jesus in the face of a society that didn't. And going to house church wasn't even a trip comparable to coming from Pearland all the way to 4100 Main Street. It was a journey to get there. Travel wasn't hard. I mean, travel was hard. If you were going to journey to go to church, you were going to be there a minute. It was, there was no rushing out at noon to get to the cafeteria. They were all there together, and it was probably a little inconvenient and a little awkward, and yet somehow in the mix, God used that, and lives were transformed, and God's great grace was upon them all. My extended family vacations together every summer, and we cram about 20 to 25 people any given summer in a house that was made for 16 to 18. It's cramped. And it's crazy, and we're crazy, and you put us all together under one roof, and it's, it's fun. We have to wait for the bathrooms. We have to wait for our shift at the lunch table. All the little cousins are running around playing and screaming, and you're trying to read a book. Sometimes you have to share a room with an aunt that snores. And you usually at least have to try your uncle's seafood stew, in which he throws all the parts of the fish into the stew all of it. But you grin, and you smile, and you try it. And at the end of the week, granted, we're ready to go to our own homes, but it sure was good to be together. And we're willing to be inconvenienced, I think, sometimes for our families, for our vacations, for our holidays. And we might think, well, that's family, Amy, that's different. But this is church family. And Acts is telling us it's not all that different. Jesus used family language for God and for his followers. The church used family language. That's why we are brothers and sisters in Christ. The church was family for each other. You held all things in common and you needed each other. You brought what you had to the table. Some brought their musical gifts. Some brought their home-cooked kosher meals. Some people didn't know what kosher was. Some members of the church didn't bring anything. They just showed up, and their gift was a presence. Some of them could shower before they got to church, and some of them couldn't. Some of them had nice things to wear, and some of them didn't. And yet they were all together, one motley crew, as the community of God. And there were problems. There were issues. And half the New Testament is Paul writing letters to churches saying, come on, see things a little differently. There were arguments, there were disagreements about different ways of life and different ways of doing things. But he reminds them consistently, as he did in today's lesson from Corinthians, for in one spirit we were all baptized. All of our differences work together for one love that is bigger than ourselves. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. They were of one spirit, one heart and soul, and that's the only reason that they could even think about selling everything they had and giving it to each other. That is the only lens through which any of this makes any sense. It was crazy, and it transformed their lives. And they shared it with others, and it transformed their lives. And the church grew, and it spread, so much so that the authorities said, this is crazy. What is going on? And they threw them in jail for it. 
That's nice, Amy. Really, we love the idea of the church then, but this really is now in the real world. You know, we have modern conveniences of fences and locks and blinds for reasons. We're a big church. You can't possibly know everyone. And we live in Houston. We're so spread out. And my Sunday school class is community for me, and I go to a South Main at home group. I get it. But do we get it? Because Acts is showing us a different picture than even our church looks today. And that's not all bad. Modern life is different. And I do get it. Houston is spread out, and we are a big church. But God's call to us is still the same. We're reminded today that once we have community, we're called to share it. And we're called to shape it. And we can't do that by assuming that the community leaders and the teachers and the ministers, that's their job, and they'll do it, and I can just show up and go home, and that doesn't matter. It does matter. You matter to me, and you matter to us. And if you weren't here, we would be different. And that's something that's a gift, and it's beautiful, and we're called to share it. We may not need each other's commodities, We may want each other's flat screen TVs, but we don't need it. (laughs) But we do need each other spiritually, and it's not a matter of convenience or comfort. Christmas time is a sacred time for me and for my family. I love nothing more than spending Christmas Eve with my family at church and then coming home to eat my mom's homemade lasagna. And if you're connecting the dots, you're realizing you're a minister. You work on Christmas Eve. You can't always be with your family there in South Carolina or Georgia. You're right. I can't. And so my first Christmas Eve away from home and my mom's homemade lasagna, it was hard. And I was not happy at all. I was single. I was supposed to be engaged that Christmas, and I wasn't. My family was far away. I was feeling very sorry for myself and not at all like being happy at Christmas. I had friends in Dallas who were married and had a sweet little girl, and their family was coming to them for Christmas. They always spend Christmas together, and yet they weren't really happy it was Christmas either because they were supposed to have had a baby at Christmas. 